Welcome to another episode of Crime Pays with Bonnie Dustin. Today I'm coming to you from Nova Friburgo in Rio de Janeiro State, Brazil. And uh, the uh, home of a uh, gentleman who's a bromeliad expert and doing a lot to uh, conserve the very quickly vanishing species in uh, the family Bromeliaceae in Brazil. A lot of land clearance going on here and a lot of uh, complete disregard for local ecology and for the plants. So it's very important that there's people like this doing the work to preserve the plants because the habitat is being lost. É, eu sou Jorge Gastin, sou um fotógrafo e um naturalista brasileiro residente em Nova Friburgo, no estado do Rio. É, tenho essa esse hobby por achar que devemos no, no, nos preocupar com o planeta em que vivemos e por isso procuro através do meu pequeno trabalho demonstrar o meu amor a essa natureza maravilhosa e conclamo a todos aqueles que adoram a natureza a participar desse projeto mundial de preservação de toda a, a natureza é, que existente ainda no nosso planeta. Eu acho que devemos estar preocupados, todos nós, com a grande é, é, a, 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 o grande mexida que, o, que a, as pessoas estão fazendo nas matas, nas florestas, Então, é, devemos todos ter muita atenção quando vamos às florestas, o que coletamos, como coletamos, o porquê coletamos e mais, se temos permissão para essa coleta, pois muita coleta predatória está sendo feita e isso deve ser inibida, inibida pois assim teremos a certeza de, da, da contribuição para a preservação desses meios. Now, Georgie, what is what's this right here? This this species right is is that a bilbergia? Ah, yes, é bilbergia zebrina. Zebrina. Yes. God damn! Look at those fruits. Those wa waxy capsules. Yes. Semen. What color are the flowers? Uh, it's big. It's big. Look at that green sepals on this one of flowers. I was expecting a dry capsule, but it's actually a berry, so it's probably a bird dispersed seed right there. These things grow as massive epiphytes. Oh yeah, it's all gelatinous. Jesus Christ. So we're gonna go ahead and just put that right there, just swipe it right there. And uh that'll uh it's a nice substrate to germinate the new seedlings on. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. You can see he's got a relatively small yard, but he's got a lot of stuff growing here. He's done a lot, which is very inspiring. And it's even more inspiring that he's growing all this rare stuff. Uh, much of it pulled off trees that have been cut down during uh, some of the massive amounts of land clearance that have gone on in Brazil in the last 10 or 20 years. Look at that, tons of bromeliads and orchids, just a, just a giant bromeliad and orchid dungeon, an epiphytic dungeon. Jesus Christ, look at this thing. What's Arbicella macahensis? I'm probably pronouncing all this wrong. My Portuguese is terrible. Only discovered 10 years ago. Lelia lundii. Look at this. Is this, this is native, right? It's nativo? E, e, Minas. Minas, they, from Minas yeah. Gerais. Irensis. Look at this, Agmea nudicollis. God damn. It's almost doing an agave thing with those those toothed margins. Incredible plant, incredible diversity here. And look at the look at the nice moss bed he's got. What's inspiring to me is that yeah, there's not much space, but it's just packed. There's just so much diversity and a lot of it really rare. And uh, you know, he breeds these things, produces seed, and uh gets them around, you know. So he's you know, enlarging the population uh for purposes of conservation. Uenbergia Korea Raja. Those, those trichomes, making little bands, those peltate trichomes, same things you get same things you get on the Talansia. It looks like a little stalked shield if you were to look at those under a microscope. 
Look at the banding on it. The leaf blades are incredible, and the flower is incredible too. Ampelocentrum odoratissimum. Tiny flowers. Look at that though. Just the, the patterning. Just like little spirals. Look at the vellum on those roots too. Trying to go back <laughs> to whence you came. And what's, what's this up here? Oh wow, you got a maxillaria, maxillaria and then which to Lanzia? Chilanzia Bucci. <laughs> That's crazy. Must just be incredibly foggy yeah. here. Doesn't get too hot. Well, look at the look at this tiny flower. What is that? Oh my God! This tiny begonia. He just sowed the seeds right on our begonia coccinea. Just put the seeds right yeah. there. So it's not just a lot of fog. I mean, he doesn't get too hot where he lives, but he waters two to three times a day. And that's the reason this is so lush. Because a lot of this stuff is from forests that just don't tolerate drying out. Axillaria brasiliensis. That's a hell of an orchid. God, it almost looks like an amaryllid, man. That's insane. Freesia sucrii right here. Obviously going for Hummer pollination again. Red bracts, but yellow flowers. It's squiggly stigma up top. How many stamens you got? Three, right? Six, I can't tell. Ripsilis is a genus of uh, epiphytic cactus, like we discussed earlier, and there's a uh, Ripsilis mesembranthioides, because it looks like a uh, mesembranthium. Mesembranthamum, excuse me, which is eyes away, say the ice plant family. There's so many weird epiphytic cacti here, man. God, it's nuts. And Georgie's a climber, too, which, uh, of course, uh, is very helpful uh, if you're in a place where there's a lot of epiphytic plants. Now this little guy you said is Pabstiella hians. Look at those. God, that's such a weird form for an orchid flower too. That is so bizarre. Oh, it's non-resupinated it appears. So what would be the labellum is actually up top. I think, uh, Gonia paleata right here. First time I seen this in habitat, I thought it was a damn gunner because it wasn't flowering. You know, I was standing six feet away. I just saw those giant pelte leaves. God, look at those trichomes on there, though. Look at those. Basically, bracts. And there's the uh, inflorescence right there. Unisexual flowers got both male and female flowers on this uh, inflorescence. More male than female, though. And they look a lot alike. You just got to look at the base and see that the, see an ovary, and it's like figure out what's uh, what's the female what's gonna produce the fruit. No nectar reward, just uh, putting out pollen for uh, as a reward for the insects that pollinate him. See, he's got the shade cloth up. Looks like it's, I don't know, maybe 30%. And stuff that's not under it gets burned a little bit. Stuff's either gotta be higher elevation. You know, we're relatively low here compared to where a lot of this stuff is native. So either it's gotta be higher elevation or somewhat under the canopy. But you know, you see a lot of, you see a lot of, uh, a lot of these bromeliads grow and exposed on these granite inselbergs, but they're growing much higher up and they just get bathed in, in water vapor and clouds uh, at dusk once the sun starts to go down. Canistrum triangular from Espirito Santo. It's a state uh, north of here. Just the color on some of these things is nuts. Neurogelia possiflora. It just, just keeps cloning itself. That's incredible. The color on those again. God damn it. Beautiful, beautiful violets and pinks. This is a local. This is uh, from uh, Nova Friburgo, Tillandsia roseiflora. Almost got kind of a compact form right there. Let's look at this euphorbia from Minas Gerais, just, just north of here, where it's a lot drier. You get past that rain shadow from the Amazon, from the Atlantic. God, that's nuts. Looking just like our uh, North American uh, Candelilla, but a much more robust version of it. Rubby Gizneria Van, Van Hootia Calcarata. Nice money shot of those anthers. Look at that. There's a style poking out. God, Gizneria. Talk about diversity. There's so much diversity down here. Georgie, this is beautiful. You've created a paradise. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. That's all I got. Go fuck yourself. Bye.